Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take another look at the comets and what they can reveal for us. Besides giving us a global picture of what our solar system looks like, we also get a feel of how old the surfaces of planets and moons are depending upon the resulting bombardment of the comets as they come streaking into the solar system. When you look at the moon, especially through a small telescope, or you see pictures of the moon, you realize there's just thousands and thousands of craters on the moon. However, there's regions on the moon called the Maria where there's far fewer craters, and the surface looks a lot flatter as well. And so what we can tell is that the age of the surface of a moon or a planet depends upon how many craters you can find there. And I said, well, wait a minute, isn't the entire solar system the same age? And the answer is, of course it is. But the surface sometimes gets resurfaced. For example, there could be a lot of bombardment of, uh, of comets on the moon, lots of craters, and then because of some volcanic activity, the, uh, the, the surface opens up, volcanic, volcanic lava then comes and resurfaces it, and all the craters are gone. And then again, with subsequent bombardments, there's fewer craters that appear after that. And as you can see then the difference between regions on the moon where there's few craters versus regions on the moon where there's lots of craters. A very special moon, one of the moons of Saturn, called Enceladus, it's one of my favorite moons, it just looks absolutely beautiful when you see the pictures of it, has a very interesting surface. If you look carefully, one side of the moon is virtually crater-free, and the other side of the moon has lots of craters. Not as many as the, as the moon itself, but still far greater number than you'll see on the other side. Why is there such a huge difference on the moon of Enceladus between one side and the other side of the surface? Well, what that is telling us is that this part of the moon is continuously resurfacing itself. There is some geological activity that takes place there that wipes out the craters, and we can see that this other side is much older, meaning that there's a lot less volcanic activity. And we're trying to figure out, of course, why that is so. That's kind of the unique part of it. So what is it? Why would it be that a more surfaces that are not as old have far fewer craters, and surfaces that are very old have far greater craters. Well, one secret behind it is the number of impacts that have occurred on any body in the solar system based upon the age. If we go all the way back to the very beginning of the solar system and we chart out the last 4.54 billion years, the rough age of our solar system, we can see then that the number of impacts per unit time has decreased over time. The first, hundreds of mil the first 100 million years or so must have been a very, very busy uh, region. It must have been a very busy period of impacts, meaning all the moons and all the planets were continuously being bombarded by the leftover debris that was in the solar system. Asteroids, comets, small planetesimals must have fl been flying around, and as they crossed the orbit of the planet or the moon, just as the moon or the planet gets there, a cataclysmic impact leaving a big crater. Small object, of course, makes small craters, but some of the big objects that hit the moons and the planets made absolutely enormous size, size craters. On Mars, for example, there's this one basin that's probably about six miles deep, between six and 12 miles deep, actually called the Hellas Basin, which is probably the result of one of those huge impacts that must have hit Mars in the early, days, early history of the solar system. But you can see as the debris began to clear up, because every time something hits a planet or a moon, it then becomes part of that, that object, it then clears the solar system from that extra debris, and as there's less and less debris, the number of impacts kept on declining. And right now, there's far fewer impacts per unit time. Doesn't mean that there's none, but there's just some far fewer. And so that means that any surfaces that uh, have been resurfaced maybe over the last one billion years or so will have far fewer craters than in the surface that have, that have been resurfaced far longer ago, for example, three, four billion years ago. Even when the Maria were, were formed, and those were probably the result of a huge impact or several huge impacts that struck the moon hundreds of millions of years after the moon was formed, you can already see the vast difference in the number of craters per unit area based upon the relative age. So if, this, if the moon was formed about this time, you could see how many crater impacts it would be every year. And if the Maria were formed at some later time here, you can see how, how many less impacts that must have then occurred in those new surface regions. If we then go, for example, to the moon Io, one of the large four moons of Jupiter, one of the four large moons of Jupiter, and you look at the surface, you see absolutely no impact craters at all. But what you will see is you will see continual volcanic activity spewing material from the inside of the moon, resurfacing the surface of the moon continuously. So any impacts that would have occurred on Io would have long been wiped out. Any evidence of that would have been wiped out by the continual volcanic activity. 
Io being the closest of the four moons, of the four large moons to Jupiter, has a lot of tidal effect. In other words, the gravitational attraction between Jupiter and Io continuously squeeze and push the, the moon, causing a lot of activity to cause the moon to heat up on the, on the inside. And because of that extra heat being generated by that gravitational force between Jupiter and Io, a lot of volcanic activity just wiping out the surface. And Io, therefore, has basically always a brand new surface with no evidence of crater impacts. The Earth is geologically a very active object. There's always continuous volcanic activity going on. There's a lot of earthquakes, land movement, tectonic plate movement, always the weathering, the snow, the rain, the wind, and the erosion, all that continues to wipe out any kind of evidence of, of uh, crater impacts. There are 27 known impact craters on the Earth. One of the most famous ones, of course, is in Arizona called the Behringer Crater, which is about three quarters of a mile across. And you can go s still readily visit that because we estimate that that crater impact probably occurred about 50,000 years ago. And so erosion hasn't gotten rid of that crater yet. Come back 10 million years from now, you probably will have a really hard time finding that crater. So the Earth has very few craters again, an indication that the surface of the Earth is continuously being resurfaced. And so we can learn a lot about the surface the age and the activity of planets and moons based upon the number of crater impacts that we find on the surfaces. And again, that's due, we have that, we owe that knowledge and that understanding based upon how the impacts have occurred over the billions of years of the existence of the solar system and how the number of impacts have slowly declined over time. And that's how we can tell with those impact craters.